Okay, so I'll, I'll, I'll tear it down for you and how it's, what happened here because it's, uh, I'll break it down for you. Because basically what happens is he takes the boot knife, uh, which puts on his, uh, which is this a nice boot knife. I, I never had anything like this. I had a boot knife when I was a kid, but it was for like fishing and stuff. You know, like mm-hmm. if you want to fillet fish or stuff like that. His, this thing is like an actual weapon. I think you can use it as a throwing knife. Mm-hmm. And, and I remember he breaks into the window. Um, he goes around and he breaks into the window. And he goes in, and then um, he ends up getting found, and so he has to try to run away. Right. Um, and he's barely managing to escape the the tall man. Right. And he slams the door shut, locks it, and he notices that his fingers are like doing that. So he takes the knife and goes chop. Yeah. And he's like, okay, so I just did this and. I want to point out some really bad editing. Yeah, the, the, um, I've, already, I've already pointed it. Where they, where they, uh, cause when they shuts the door, obviously his figure's done. But it's a neat little yeah. effect. I, I like the creepiness of it. Mm-hmm. it. It just. But at the same time, so he like, he doesn't ever drop the knife, but he bends down and the knife is just like stuck in the floor. So, but he's like, oh, I guess I'm going to take one of these fingers for some reason. And take it home with me. He walks away without grabbing the knife. I want to point out. And then we're all, both me and Lucas were like, "Well, aren't you going to take the knife?" And so we all we both just thought that, "Yo, I guess the knife is gone." Um. But then it moves on to I want to say wasn't it Jody? Well, yeah. I mean, the thing is, is here's what happens is, is he's got the f- the finger is to move the storyline. Let, let's mm-hmm. be honest. And and the reason Papa Don had this yeah, idea yeah. is. What was that? that is just some, some bit of proof. proof. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. And and the thing is, is uh, the reason he had the idea, thought it was real creepy. He stuck it. Uh, he had a styrofoam cup, right? And he stuck his finger in there, and he just watched his finger do that. And he thought, well, that'd be a creepy, you know, effect. So that that mm-hmm. what what gave him the idea of this finger idea. And of course, the thing is, now what important character is introduced when Michael sneaks into the mortuary? It was the, um, was it the ball? The ball, yeah. And this is the best ball mm-hmm. death scene. Cause we realize how, you know, creepy and how wonderful this mm-hmm. ball is. So it goes, uh, it, there's a guy chasing, he, he looks like the, like an undertaker and he's uh, mm-hmm. got Michael by the throat and then here comes a ball which just has these great sound effects, you know, Star Wars sound effects like the speeder bikes and Return of the Jedi or the lightsabers and, uh, uh, you know, the Star Wars thing. So you got the, mm-hmm. and it's going down the wall and it, and he, and, and so Michael is short enough to to get away from the undertaker and it goes and hits the uh guy's forehead and so what what happens let's just talk about this it it, like drilled into the center of his forehead yeah and it like started like pushing or like squirting all of the brain juice or like everything in his head like out the back side of the ball (laughs) And actually, his brother, who was watching with us, that's kind of when he like really started to watch it. Um, oh, he was kind of watching from the beginning, but um, he just starts dying laughing because uh, it just looked funny. Um, as the, people the who kind of grew up with stuff like Nightmare on Elm Street, stuff yeah. like that. Or, yeah, and and then the ball goes right to the to the guy's head, and then you mm-hmm. see the blood getting pumping out of there and uh so what what the thing is i like when he falls down and then michael's like you know is is, he watches the guy what's the next thing you notice about the 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 feet what's going on down there i actually don't don't think i was paying attention i just i want to say i want to say one thing about the ball though is that like it was a great idea and i but there was no other deaths except for one of their own people with the ball so it was very like anti uh 
It was inefficient. <laughs> <laughs> I, but you know, had it so. Yeah, yeah, it's a that. great. Let's put it this way: it's a great visual. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's like like we're talking about Suspira, great visuals. Well, it's definitely memorable. Like yeah. one of the most memorable scenes of the movie, probably. I would say. Yeah, mm-hmm. and, and because of the ball, it, you get the sequel because I believe that's what people remember most about this film. But the thing when the guy dies. This is one of the first films that I've ever seen do this where the guy dies. And as you know, when people die, their body – lose their body fluids. Mm-hmm. I noted that too. I was like, dude, he just peed all over himself. Yeah, exactly. I was like, that's – and <laughs> Yeah, it was real. And I can see Papa Don coming up with that. But uh, – We'll touch a, so while we're talking about, let's talk about the yellow fluid and, uh, and get to the point of, uh, you know, about the yellow fluid. Um, I mean, any of y'all were raised, uh, around people that worked at funeral homes or have families in funeral homes? Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, one of the jobs that I've had, you know, like, like I said, being electronics and speakers and mics was setting up, uh, I got into a business with a guy who, um, was about in his 80s. I think he was 80s or 90s. He owned a business that installed speakers and sound equipment for funeral homes. It was a great job. You make good money. Basically, he would put all the sound equipment advertisements in uh, funeral home magazines, right? And so uh, he, he, he people would look at the magazines and see these nice little setups. This is prior before the internet, so you had to buy everything magazine. So through the funeral home trade magazines, they contact us, and then we load up a van full of uh, the sound equipment. We go to the funeral homes, and then you install it. And of course, you know you're you're around all the dead people and everything like that. But it was a great gig. These cabinets were probably worth about five hundred dollars, and we had a markup about two thousand, three thousand dollars. And at wow. the same time, you stay at you stayed at a cheap hotel and all this. Then you have to go to these funeral homes and install in these equipment. Then usually you got you got you only had work like three days a week and whatever. But it was great. It was a great little gig. But then the guy got involved with a young girl and like he was in his 90s he got involved with a 70 year old little um you know go digger and so yeah he closed the business because he was like yeah i don't i'm too old to work so you know shit and then (laughs) that was it (laughs) he got this 70 year old younger woman 20 years (laughs) For a second, yeah. he's like a seven year old, and I was like, that. 70, 70. He's like in his 90s, and she was like in her 70s. So, it, you know, they, the rumor was that she was a gold digger. And it's like. <laughs> he's 72. <laughs> exactly. I know. I know. That's the reason I always thought that was funny, but it ended up closing the business, anyways. But, you know, mm-hmm. embalming fluid, I believe, is yellow. And the whole thing is, uh, I believe my theory is that these people are injecting the, their own type of embalming fluid in these people to make these type of zombies. And mm-hmm. so that's why I think the yellow fluid is about is it's supposed to be instead of you're replacing the blood with embalming fluid because that one thing, the embalming fluid helps keeps the corpse from, uh, you know, rotting, you know, basically. Mm-hmm. So, uh, continue. so we've got the finger, we've got the finger. And we got it into our little miniature coffin, right? We got it in a little miniature mm-hmm. coffin, right? And so, uh, so, so we got it in a little miniature coffin. And so he shows it to Jody and I love Jody's reaction. I believe you. <laughs> <laughs> so, so basically the brother's like, okay. This is some real stuff. We're gonna, you know, go to the police about it. So, go you know, grab your evidence. yeah, go grab your evidence. Uh, you know, they, they grab guns and stuff, I guess. I don't know. And the brother goes upstairs to, and opens it up. Cause he's like, oh, my finger's not moving. I'm gonna open it up. And there's this like, fly monster. It's yeah. like a black, long, almost like angry caterpillar looking thing. <laughs> And, and, and you know, there's a lot of people talking about these Asian hornets, what's been around here for a long time. And let me tell you, if you've ever been chased, yeah, if you've ever been chased by uh, a, a hornet, 
It, you know that feeling because every time I see that scene, I think about when I was a kid, when I get into a nest full of yellow jackets or something like that. Oh, it's just terrible because you're scared to death. You're going to get stung to death, you know, and that's what I feel mm-hmm. about these, this kid. He's like, uh, you know, he's getting that thing. And then, and then of course, the funny thing is they throw it into the, uh, <laughs> The I can't think. Check garbage, disposal. garbage disposal, and then here comes Reggie, the ice cream guy, who wants to borrow Michael for the day because he he does good crowd control, you know. So uh, he goes in there and he takes the uh a, the then the thing comes out of the garbage disposal, goes after mm-hmm. Reggie and, he, and Michael again, goes after Michael again, and then of course. They take it in the jacket and throw it back in the garbage disposal and ends that scene. And that's, yeah. Knife. Yeah, exactly. The knife through the garbage disposal. And that's when Jody decides to go investigate because of the fact that something's going on down there. And so he wants to see what's going on. So uh, who wants to go with this? Uh, basically, he like straps up and he goes back through the basement. Okay, he goes in through the basement window that Michael had broken, and he's just immediately attacked by our Ewok people. Jawas. Our little mini- Jawas. Yeah. <laughs> Jawas. 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 Jawas, the little coffee cups. Yeah. yeah. Coffee yeah. Coffee yeah. One of them dies. And then he's like, basically he shoots them, and then he's like, shit, I gotta get out of here. As if that wasn't why he was there in the first place. He was like, Oh no, there's people here that I expected to be here. I better leave. Well, I mean, I think he had to see for himself because his little brother, you know, might have a vivid imagination, but. That's yeah. true, yeah. yeah. I don't know, but I feel like once I saw a, that finger. A severed finger that's still moving and is, is yellow yeah. instead of red. I'm, at that point, I'm, I'm gonna Basically. believe whatever you say. Basically. Well, yeah, uh, I know, but he, I just, I, it's like I said, they, these guys are a little bit tougher. They, they want to see for themselves what's going on because mm-hmm. it's like he want, one thing too is he fears that the tall man knows where they live. And I think that's an issue too. So like if you get the person before they get you kind of attitude. But here's my biggest problem I have with that scene is when, like when he's in the basement and the jaw was like gnawing on his back. He takes the 45 and does this. That is the dumbest thing you could ever do with a gun. Never. Let me tell you something. Children. Do not take a gun and aim it towards you like this. Never. I don't care if there's a jaw on your back. I don't care if it's one of those little 12-year-old fangirls and you're dressed up like Hanny Senpai on your back. You do not take a gun and shoot them like this. This is very bad because you can hurt yourself. And by the way, this is a Colt 45. This is not an Army issue Colt 45 because Army issues are black and not silver. Even though he does say that this is Army issue, Army it's issue. not. This is a collector's gun. It's not a Army issue, mm-hmm. by the way. Yeah. They're, like I said, they're silver and not black. But anyways, he shoots the Jawas, which is like my first instinct I would do. <laughs> anyway, yeah. but I'm not doing this. I'm sorry. That's I'm going to take a knife or something to do like this, or take a back scratcher or something. Get out of my back. <laughs> I mean, you might lose your hearing, but literally, yes, it's you're you're going to lose your hearing. Something's going to happen. This is a 45, y'all. This thing tears. Flesh. We're not talking. I'm not talking about a nine millimeter. I'm not talking about a twenty two Beretta. This is a freaking forty five. It's designed to tear flesh, mm-hmm. and it's terrible. It's to get shot by forty five is the worst feeling you could ever have. It's not like a twenty two. You get hit with twenty two and be like. In fact, we watched a movie recently where Kennedy shot shoots the kid in the arm with a twenty two, and he's like, "Oh, it's just a flesh wound. Don't worry about it." Yeah, that's right. It's a twenty two. Don't worry about it. You got shot by 22 bread a big deal you know it's like that's the reason why i have a little thing if you watch Django, the derringer that shoots uh uh what we were watching that he's using a 22 derringer if he was at that close range yeah i can see deadliness but if he shot him like 10 15 feet away he probably would have just brushed it off like something like that because it's a derringer mm-hmm. but anyways um so we're, he, he leaves, uh, the best part is this chasing now because Michael picks him up in the, uh, by the way, do you guys know what type of car this is? 
Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a 71 Cuda uh, uh, Hemi, which is a uh, knockoff of the Barracuda. And Papa Don mm-hmm. wanted the Barracuda in the film because he knew a kid who had a Barracuda, and he was very envious of uh, the Barracuda. Okay, So uh, Barracuda is just a beautiful car. I prefer my, – my dream car is the 65 uh, – uh, black Camaro that you see from Better Off Dad. This is a beautiful, beautiful eight-cylinder car. And um, so he picks them up in the Cuda Hemi. And so what happens then? The hearse goes after them, right? And it looks like there's nobody in the driver's seat, mm-hmm. basically. So they're basically getting chased by that car. And they're like, okay, uh, they end up. What happens? They shoot the tire or something. Well, well, the thing is, he's, they're going, he's, and the thing is, which is silly because they should have known in writing. You only need to mention one time that there's nobody driving. Like that should have been one time and that's all they said. There's nobody driving this mother. And he says it again, which is silly. But anyways, he, uh, he goes up through the, the moon roof. Um, Jody, yeah, and he, and and he shoots the tire. engine. No, he shoots the engine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, shoots the engine. And shoots the engine block. And so that goes off, and then we find out that the, the Jawa is, uh, Tom. Driving it. Yeah, it, who is Tom. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which is very convenient, and it, it makes you wonder, like, you know, like, this is a personal vendetta thing or something going on here. Yeah. Cause why would you send Tommy after them? You know, other than that, it's just convenient writing, I call it. Oh, how convenient. It's Tommy. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. And they find out that it's Tommy. So then they ask, this is a scene where I'm like, I'm very questionable about, why would you ask your friend Reggie to come and, um, Pick up, uh, this corpse in his ice cream thing. Can we talk about this? Huh? Can we talk about this? I don't know. I'm making drug, but I mean, basically, so what happens after? I'm not exactly sure the sequence of what happens after this until we get to see the ice cream truck car again. What do we do? Oh, yeah. Michael ends up. With these, the ladies. That's mm-hmm. later. That that would be later. That'd be later. Okay, what's next then? Next is he's going to end him, give him up to the ladies, but they pick up the body in the ice cream. But he says, Michael, you're going to go with the ladies. But the thing is, uh-huh. is is um, the best line though that Reggie has is I love this is I love this line. He's not gonna leak over my all of my. Oh, he's not gonna leak all over my ice cream, is he? <laughs> I, I would not eat ice cream in that truck after I uh, had a dead no. mutant in my truck. Yeah, absolutely not. Yeah, we had one of our first jump scares. I guess the housemaid uh, pops up uh, on Reggie, which we never established her character. Uh, I can't think of, her, but she. Uh, she like comes out of nowhere uh and scares um the poor <laughs> poor kid poor Reggie and uh and of course like I said Reggie is in the sequel to this Michael isn't people thought the producers for the second one thought Michael's face would scare audiences so mm-hmm. he wasn't in the second one bless his heart but he got to be in the third one so uh, go figure. Because, what? That's really weird. Yeah, because he said because the second one didn't do any better, whether it was with Michael or not, it didn't matter. Uh, and like I said, probably later on, Papa Don had some more uh, more um, pull, but that was like in 1988. It would be ten years later. And what sold people to do the sequel was the balls. They were wanted to see the balls. That's all they cared about was the balls, because the balls were really cool. And uh, people just like shiny balls, you know. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I mean, obviously, I mean, look at some of these. Uh, you look at Baby Yoda, <laughs> you know. Um, people just like shiny balls. And if you get, and it's like, I wouldn't doubt if if nowadays if Phantasm would have been released, there'd probably be shiny balls you could buy at the uh, store. You know, look, get the Phantasm shiny balls. <laughs> Drilling is not included. Yeah, and so he's dumped off 
at uh, Jody's girlfriend's who was not established as a character because it was deleted for time. Because, like I said, this was the 70s. We get in and get out. We get what's ours and we get out. We're done here. We don't sit around and establish a bunch of dumb characters like a bunch of, uh, you know, stupid people. We just go in there and we say, let's get this film moving. All right. We got to get to the shiny balls. And that's an important thing. So uh, they dropped him off with these girls, which really kind of I hate these, this scene because it like slows the movie down. And it's kind of silly. Uh, but anybody want to touch on this? Um, no. You can go for it. Um, so he is like, yo, we need to leave. And so he jumps in the car. He's like, yo, we need to get out of here now. And they're both like, oh, what's going on? I'm like, why, why are you all, like, what's happening? Yeah. Like, what's going on? I really didn't want him to be like, bitch, go. <laughs> Back, hey, that's one thing I can say about it. Back in those days, we respected the ladies. <laughs> <laughs> Because if you did oh, not, if you said that, there's no chance of you getting that lady in a cemetery. All right, now let's go to what we're going to. So, which is terrible. Um, this this Volkswagen, they're in a Volkswagen, isn't they? <laughs> By the way, perfect for little girls. But um, stature wise, I'm not talking about age girls. I'm talking about stature that they're they're small and petite. That's what I meant. Mm-hmm. But um. They're, they're still preoccupied with trying to figure out what's going on, basically. And so then it just kind of goes silent because they're like, well, we're kind of, we're kind of screwed here. Um, and then the, um, Jawa, uh, breaks through and starts like trying, like, basically literally just everybody. opens the door. Yeah. Dude, literally opens the door. But you know what is so funny? Yeah. The line that cracks, you know what cracks me up? You know what really cracks me up? It's like he opens the door, right? And the one girl's like, get him out. And it's like like the other girl's going like, no, he's so cute. I want to take him home with me. <laughs> but then it reaches for, um, what's his name? Mike. The, uh, Michael. Oh, no, 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 no. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. There's multiple Jawas ends up in the vehicle, right? Mm-hmm. I thought it was just one. No, no there's one in the front seat, then there's one in the back seat getting him. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they're all over. Oh. So there's yeah. at least two of them. Yeah, it almost looks Kate. like the Jawas are trying to get their game on. But anyways. Yeah, great. That's, that's, that was the point of this whole movie, is that's all they actually wanted in the end. <laughs> but, uh, okay, so we ended up... I like oh, my what? women tall. <laughs> well, well, what happens was... um. When the one in the back seat was uh, pushing um, like Michael, rather than then push out the back. Oh, that's right. He ends up on the ground. And then he kind of just gets up and walks away and then walks home. Great. Then, then that's when he gets home and uh, Jody's sitting there just like... Yeah, just hanging out. And, and then Jody's like, come here, brother. Sit on my lap and tell me your yeah. sorrows. And it was really come weird. Here. It, it was very weird. And it, it's it's what started giving me the idea that maybe something's not actually like. Right. I don't know. Not something was something right. weird. Something's weird. But uh, basically, at this point, what do we do? Do we end up? Well, At this point, they, they end up going back to the funeral home, right? They get yeah. their guns, and they... That's go- when um, Jody is like, yo, you can actually have this now. Mm-hmm. Stay here. Yeah. Lock up. Yep. And he grabs his uh, gun, and he's... Mm-hmm. And he walks off, obviously, and then... And then, so Michael at home is literally like, all right, I'm going to be a good boy and stay home for once. And then he goes, he's like, all right, I'm going to lock this window, opens the window, locks it, opens the other window. Tall man. Yup, and he goes, knife! Yeah! Knife through window. Knife punch through window. But yeah, uh, so we got my... No, 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 no. Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm trying to figure this out here. Because the, the way I understand it, I guess, I guess, I hope we saw the same movie, um, is the, um, 
you know, they've both gone through traumatic experience, right? Both of them, right? So they end, mm-hmm. yeah, they both end up at the house and there's like this surreal running thing like, uh, you see in a lot of films with Michael, great shot. And of course, uh, Michael, it, not Michael, Jody is dealing with what he just saw. Uh, and so he, mm-hmm. and like I said, when they come together, they hug, but Jody's had enough and he's like, I'm going to lock you in your room. Mm-hmm. Okay, because that's right. Yeah, that's right. He takes the fiber and goes and he shoves it into mm-hmm. the door. Exactly, and that's where you like said the tall man comes and get him. But the point is, and here's another thing too: is one thing I'll say about modern films is you have to establish love interest a little bit better. And I think the idea was intentionally that Jody is getting revenge for Sally, but we don't have any backstory with Sally and these girls mm-hmm. for Jody to have a motivation to go after them. And I think it would have made the scene a little bit better, and you only need 10 to 15 yeah. minutes of that to kind of... Yeah, we were living in, like, four of these girls. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. But there was intention to have a backstory. But like I said, back in those days, you got 90 minutes to throw a film together. If you went over that, you it was a sin. You were not. You were banned from Hollywood if you went over 90 minutes back in those days. Uh, you were uh, not allowed to ever make films again. They took your union card. They ripped it up. No, that's not it. The truth is, yeah, basically you had these big guys who ran the show with money and they said, Stabish, I love interest. I don't know about that. My wife just left me and took half of my things. How about we don't establish a love interest, okay? But I uh, got to, to try to give Jody motivation. Here's his motivation. <sighs> He has none. Yeah, basically. <laughs> um, but we end up kind of hard from here. So Jody's at the funeral parlor, and my first we have the MacGyver scene. Let's do the MacGyver scene. The MacGyver scene where he, um, where Jody shoves the screwdriver in, and so then Michael he goes and he's like, well. So he kicks the door in, or a hole in the wall, and he's like, "Ah, let me out of here!" I'm um, has a bullet in his pocket. Yeah, that we didn't know about, and um, he goes and he sits down. And he's like, yeah, "He figures this one out," and goes up there and playing around with it, realizes he has a hammer, and he's like, "Hmm." So he gets a. I don't remember. It was, it was like a diamond almost. It was a tack. Um, cause he had, a, a, he had a peg board where he um, keep, he keep, you know, things on there like posters and whatever. Yeah. Kids had peg boards. I mean, like I said, these were yeah. well to do parents back in the seventies. These were not poor kids. And yeah. cause like you see that big old poster, the moon and all that stuff. That, that room would have been expensive in the seventies. And, and like I said, we've already established that he can shoot guns. So we, we can figure out that he had a shell in his pocket. But let's say, I always think of MacGyver. MacGyver was a guy who used to do things like this. And so, you know, yeah. I wanna, and MacGyver would have this like nor background tone and then he would say something silly while he would do it. And you, and you hear him do the explosion here. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, dun, dun. Anyway, so enough of that. So it uh, he takes the, basically takes the shotgun shell, tapes it to the hammer with a uh, tag the and tag pushed into the shell. Yeah, so he can rip the uh, uh, hammer, uh, not the hammer out, the screwdriver out. Yeah, right <laughs> goes downstairs and then he is uh, invited by the tall man for a ride. And again, I'm peeking for some reason. Okay, so. For the pa- tall man in the ride, and of course he says, he gets, and that's when he has to go. Exactly, he goes. He says, <laughs> and so, or no, it was like, <laughs> and so he, he takes you know him into the hearse, and so mm-hmm. we get a to get Jody, Reggie, and. Michael at the funeral place, and so that's what entails to get, find out to unravel this uh, thing that's going on. But um, basically, as uh, the tall man is driving, and uh, Michael's like, "Dude, let me out of here." He remembers, "I have a gun." <laughs> so he's like, 
he's like, so what do I shoot? And so he's like, and then he shot the tire and made it uh, sort of off the road so that he could uh, jump out um, and so that he could escape. And then mm-hmm. that's whenever he sees the funeral uh, parlor and he's like, all right, so we're all in the funeral parlor now. Um, Jody has opened up. Was it supposed to be their dad's coffin or something like mm-hmm. that? Yeah. And then uh, Michael ends up doing the same thing, opens it, and it's empty. Yeah. Um, but the thing so is, is like, Jody's not able to see it. Michael is, and he screams. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but the point is, uh, uh, it's to, like I said, the, the hearse is to get point A to point B, uh, all mm-hmm. this stuff, because now we've got to unravel. So let's unravel. Reggie shows up. As well, he and he explains that the girls have escaped because we don't have time to see that scene. Everything's cool, so now we've got we find this door with all these like uh, Greek gods on the top and that kind of thing, mm-hmm. and they open up the door, and so here we go. Everything's unfolded, so let's unfold this. Okay, so basically, lining the walls is all these barrels that have our little. Java guys in them. So they apparently we have all these guys lined up. And then Michael looks over towards these two beans and like sticks his hand in and sees that his hand like disappears and he's like, Don't fear, don't fear. Don't don't fear. fear. And he looks in and, and he ends up falling in and his brother catches him, but he's looking in and like there's all these all of the Javas are like slaves in this weird alternate planet world that you can access mm-hmm. through this like barrier door. So, yeah, it's pretty crazy. Um, and then at that point, Michael and Jody escape, but, oh, the lights turn off. Michael and Jody escape, but Reggie's, like, stuck in the room, and it starts sucking in well, and everything. Because, uh, no, was, that wasn't Jody. That was... Reggie. Yeah, yeah Reggie. Yeah, it was Reggie. It's what um, I said. Uh, I thought so. I'm dumb. I thought uh, I said Reggie. But uh, Reggie, it remembers, because him and uh, Reggie and Jody in an earlier thing that we didn't even mention, they were playing instruments. Mm-hmm. And uh, Reggie had to tune his guitar, so he used a pitch t- or a uh, tuning fork. Tuning fork. Um, and so he remembered that, and so he's like, huh, because it's literally the two... Uh, metal rods that are the portal. This is what we use now, hand. folks. Uh, this is how we tune our guitars now, okay? You yeah. That little button right there. And, and pretty much. Goes, yeah, this is how you do it. In fact, you, you see the little, see the little C, A, B on there. Yep. And, uh, but, but the thing is, is, uh, basically it says, okay, it's using sound to go to this other planet and dimension. And I, mm-hmm. I noticed that kiddo said, uh, beans and said Java at the same time. I was thinking they were two Java beans. So these, uh, pose, like tuning forks, uh, they made this, lo- this hum as they walk into, which is a great sound effect. They use that. It's like someone fell asleep on a Moog keyboard, you know, back in the 70s. Mm-hmm. And it was like, mm. hey, that's a great sound effect. Let's use that, you know. And so, mm-hmm. and eventually, uh, you know, Michael jumps through there and of course, Jody saves him, you know, but we learned that these are slaves and they have to be shrunk down to size. Why? Died. They had to be shrunk down to size because right. of of heat, of the weather or the heat, and because of the gravity. I don't know, folks. Mm-hmm. Did you look that up for me? I'm not a scientist, okay? So Yeah, I don't think about that. Yeah, so I'm just saying I guess that was just something that was written in there. But anyways, whatever. Let's run with it. So uh, we're in this big white room. Great visual, by the way. Anybody like this visual? You know, I did. I, I did. The white room. Yeah, yeah it was interesting. Effects. Again, it surreal horror. horror. Surreal horror. So, I mean, this really breaks it down because, like I said, Reggie escapes from the room because it starts trying to suck him in. And I had forgotten that he escaped. I thought he actually got sucked in. I couldn't remember. No, he crawls out of the room and he does make it. Yeah. Um. 
What for a while, for a little bit. <laughs> there is one great visual too here because the lights go dark and the power goes out and he pulls the little switch and when he it pulls the, the the lighter for the people. Yes, people, we used to have to use a, used to have to have a lighter to light your cigarette. Okay. So, um, he does the lighter and it lights up this Jawa right in front of his face, which is a great scary effect. I just loved it. And so. Mm -hmm. But anyways, they all escape from the place, uh, which, by the way, this sucking is sucking everything, even the, the building, everything. It's sucking all the Jawas, it's sucking the building, it's sucking the tall man into this thing. Uh, mm -hmm. because you see the little yellow lights that, you know, like they're moving on to the next town, basically. So, uh, which really, hurries up the film too fast because uh Reggie dies by the way folks spoiler alert because the purple lady stabs him at this time and again this is surreal yeah, finally and they were like no you're not going to survive yeah, exactly exactly it's like after all that he gets killed by the purple lady cuz you know he's he's got weakness and I don't think Reggie had he in a while you know Mm -hmm. He's an ice cream man, for goodness sake. I guess they played music at night, too, whatever. They, they, there was a trio, Tommy, Reggie, and Jody. And that was the trio. Mm -hmm. So, uh, which, again, no backstory. <laughs> so don't, just roll with it. Use your imagination. It's real anyways, because everything just falls apart anyways. And everything we watch means nothing towards the end. Um mm -hmm. And which is like it's a terrible trick to play on the audience, but hey, it's a horror film. Yeah, and are we are we there now that we can talk about that? Is yeah, there anything sure. else? Go ahead, yeah, because there's really not much except for let's. There was this quick plot about the mine, and I'll just go over it real quickly and briefly. Which uh, today, I mean, you have to watch this film several times to understand this mine shaft. There's a mine shaft that has like a pit in it, and they want to get the tall man there. They hurried this scene in there. I mean, it was like five minutes. And again, if we had a map of this place, these places, like there's the mine shaft, there's the, <laughs> the, the funeral place, there's the house, like in the bar. It's like, is this like a little community that small? And, and you, you know what I'm saying? So basically mm -hmm. somehow Michael layers the, um, uh, tall man to the mine shaft with the pit that he didn't even know was made for the, the tall man, but Jody sets up talking to him about it. And then again, the, we wake up and Michael's with Reggie and it's all a dream. Mm -hmm. And they were like, you're just having bad dreams because Jody died. Right. That, that's, what, that's what got me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it throws you for a loop. It throws you for a loop. Mm -hmm. And again, it's real. And somewhere, and I'm sure there's places Papa Don needs to explain, like, what's a dream, what's real, kind of like with the uh, M. Night Shyamalan does with uh, the six senses or the seven senses or whatever, you know, the, anyways, there's scenes where you know it's a, it's uh, a, uh, you know, they, you know, to give you clues, right? What's real and what's not. Mm -hmm. They need to have, like, how they set that up. For this film, uh, one of these. Days. I think they set it up well. I think they set it up well with how odd it was the interaction between how odd and loving the interactions were between the brothers and how they kept alluding to the fact that Michael has nightmares. Right, exactly. A lot of this is Michael's nightmares, and, and, and of course, there's a lot of theories to uh, where um, to get into it. You know, like I said, I I like this film as a standalone. But there's a series, and if people, I'm sure if you watch the other films and you like them, I'm sure it'll explain all this. But I don't really want an explanation, and I just said I did. But I like this as a standalone film. I don't want to get into the other two, threes, because I really think the other films are just money makers. You know, it's like, oh, the ball is back, you know, kind of thing. Oh. So with this but basically we got a dream and then we've got this great scary ending michael's packing his bag and what happens uh he's packing his bag and he's uh or he looks in his mirror and sees the uh the tall man and then he turns around and then 
hand butt through his closet and like pull him in. And it hurt. Oi. 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 <laughs> so, so he grabs Michael and we end there. But like I said, it's the whole thing is because Reggie and him are just going to hit the road. That's that's the whole thing is mm-hmm. Reggie's going to hit the road. Uh, and like I said, there are Phantasm sequels. Uh, one of these days we might get into them. I, th- I like this as a standalone. I'm okay with everything goes through there. Very surreal horror, great visuals. And uh, I'll give my recommendations to get over with. If you like Suspira, if you like any of the horror films of that era and just like the visuals and the surrealness of the horror – this is up your alley. If you're looking for straight slasher horror, this ain't for you. This is not Nightmare on Elm Street. It's not Jason. It's not Michael Myers. It is surreal horror that is with great visuals. And if you want to emulate something new and innovative, this is great for you. Anybody who wants to study rock music videos, all the, a lot of the sample stuff was influential to a lot of death metal bands that would use a lot of the samples from this movie. Death metal, uh, people in the death metal genre have a very love for this film because the movie is basically trying to deal with death. That's where basically the, the undertaker and the, um, uh, tall man are nothing more than, uh, showing us his death and how that death is something so hard to deal with. And this is what this film is about and, and, and dealing with losing someone around you who has died. And this is what this film, you know, deals with. It's very popular among, uh, you know, they say the, the 12 to 14 year old boy crowd, but I think people who are in surreal horror, uh, love this film. Uh, and one person who loves this film is J.J. Abrams, the creator of the director of Star Trek. He loves this film and enjoys it, worships it. So, uh, your recommendations? Um, I thought it was pretty good. If, uh, like you said, if you're into the older, uh, or like, the, um, what was the, I can't really pronounce that name. Uh, how do you pronounce it? Suspira. Suspira. Surreal, um, or surreal horror. Mm-hmm. If you like those kind of movies and you like uh, Suspira, then I would say watch it. Um, I wasn't expecting to like it as much as I did, mm-hmm. but I, I liked it. I enjoyed it a lot. I think, <laughs> I guess what it is in my mind, I enjoyed this movie. I would recommend this to anybody who either likes um, older horror or horror that doesn't revolve around jump scares, which is, like, a big deal thing. It's, like, especially all the ones nowadays, horror, like, seems to revolve around the jump scares. And really, like, there was one or two in this movie, but it didn't rely on it. You know what I mean? Right. Well, yeah, yeah it's just, it's, I call it creepy. And, like I said, it's real is the best way to describe it. And... I was, uh, you know, it's like, I was hesitant at first because I threw out, I mean, first of all, I want to say we got a couple of minutes here. Um, I, I, I saw that one movie and I thought that's the one I want to see because I haven't seen it because it looked like it was going to be slow, like a different type of horror film. And then I saw the trailer and it was like, oh, it's an 80s fun tra- uh, horror film. And it was like I watched it and the editing was so bad. It was paced so slow. The acting was so terrible. I just hated it. Uh, Paul Feig. The other one that we were supposed to do? Yeah, the Paul Feig. This was the one that I sent you first. Paul Feig ended up being the director of uh, Go- the new Ghostbusters. And you watch him in this and you realize, oh, that's the reason why you screwed up the new Ghostbusters. Because this is just a horrible, horrible film. And and I was like, well, what am I going to do? Because I, I don't think I can do a review on it because all I'm going to do is just crap on it. And it, plus, I, I'm... <laughs> <laughs> I know, I totally get that. And, and, well, and the I'm worst watching. thing... Yeah, and the worst thing is, meant I was going to have to watch it again. And I didn't... Because I just glanced through it, you know, like I'm doing something, like I, I do video editing and I watch it. And I just glanced through it and I think, this is terrible. And I don't want to watch it again. That there was there was this one song towards the end. I give you is like a Beastie Boys ripoff called uh, "Kiss My Butt." Was the name of the song at the end? Was the it's just terrible. I mean, I didn't know if it's being fun. I didn't know if it was being dramatic. I, 
it's just awful. And these hard edits, like these have these wipes, but they would make this noise was so annoying. And I was like, well, when y'all, when you came back and I said, I'm going to see if I can get them to do something else. Cause I always wanted you to do a house or do, um, Phantasm eventually, but I've already seen those films. And so when he came back and said, no, I hadn't seen it, I was like, uh, well, let's do Phantasm or the house. Just pick one of those two. And you pick Phantasm, which is fine. And I thought you'd like that because of the boy. And I thought you'd like Michael. And I think that kind of you would have some sort of connection there. Well, we're at 1240. Yeah, I like it. It's been great. So. I appreciate it. And I, I'm sorry we tried to have her this thing through, but, it, you know, because it's like we got to get back to reality. It's Memorial Day week. Yeah, we had a few loops throughout this, but we, we made it. Here we are. We yeah. Have- yeah, because I didn't know I was gonna make. I'm a, I'm almost almost had almost thoughts gonna message you and have to cancel, but uh, I was able to work it through. So because uh, I didn't want to have to cancel on you if I had to. All right, guys, that's it. See y'all next week. Uh, probably get with me later if you want to do another one. I'm open because, like I said, this is y'all's time to turn it on. But uh, we said what we said. Uh, it's hot in here. I gotta get the air conditioning back on and then go get out of the house. Oh god, I forgot you had to do that for the sound. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, uh, it, it is, it is tough, but the pro, the, the thing is, is man, if you don't have any noise, you don't have to worry about editing later. Don't so. say goodbye. Bye. Don't say goodbye. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Who's your daddy?